Hey everyone, Bob here, KD4 BMG. Today on HOA Ham, pairing the Zygu X5105 5 watt QRP receiver with the Zygu XPA 125B 100 watt amplifier automatic antenna tuner. We're going to review connecting the cables correctly, choosing the correct radio, amplifier, and tuner settings. We'll discuss reading the feedback on the tuner amplifier screen. We'll show several QSOs that I've recorded previously so you can watch the feedback on that screen and follow the SWR, the watts in, the watts out. We'll share a QSO map so you can see where those uh, connections took place, how far away. You'll be able to hear how strong the signals were on some very weak days of propagation. And then a few final thoughts or a mini review, so to speak. A few thoughts before we jump into this. First, I owned both the X5105 and the XPA125B long before there was a thought of an HOA ham YouTube channel. I've known for a long time these two would pair well together, and I bought the XPA125B specifically for my IC705. So that's where we'll head at some point in the future. Second, when people talk about the XPA125B, they refer to it as the amplifier. Yes, it is a 100 watt amplifier. It's also an automatic antenna tuner. So as you think about your working conditions and your use case and your limited budget, realize that you have a dual capability piece of equipment here. Finally, if you're finding my content useful, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. You know that helps me out on YouTube. And ring that bell so you'll be notified in the future when I post new videos. If you would like to help the channel out, feel free to use my links below to purchase the XPA125B or any Zygu equipment at radiodity.com. In full disclosure, I would receive a referral bonus and you would receive a discount, so we both get something out of that. Let's go ahead and talk about what we need to do all of our connections. Of course, we're going to have our X5105. We're going to need what came with our XPA125B, which will be a power cord. It did not come with power poles. Of course, I added them later. And you will get a cable that has a DIN pin connector on both sides. And what comes with the XPA125B itself is a six pin DIN connector. You will need to purchase the CE19, which also comes with its own cable with DIN connectors on both sides. But on the CE19, it will come with an 8-pin connector. So you get an 8-pin with the CE19, and you get a 6-pin with the XPA125B. And these will both feed into the CE19. One will feed then into your... QRP rig, and one will feed into the back of the amplifier. So let's flip this thing around and get to its business end and show you how to hook it up. The most challenging part of this assembly might well be just getting the correct cable, the 6-pin or the 8-pin, connected to the CE19. Now, you can't really make a mistake, but you could damage a cable. So make sure you look closely at the end of the pinout on your DIN connector and make sure you look at the pinout on the receptacle on the CE19. It's very easy to see, even with challenge eyesight, I have bifocals, so I can see that I have a, uh, a six pin here, and then I can see on the 5105 side, I have an eight pin. So let's go ahead and do the easy part and get our power cable connected. I'll be off camera here because over to the right, I have uh, a power pole distribution block, so let me get that plugged in. My power supply is off, so I will be connecting this while the power is not live. Sorry for the shakes. My camera is on an extended arm, and if I hit my desk, it will just shimmy a little bit. There is a little clip on the end of this uh, power cable receptacle uh, plug, receptacle, plug, plug, receptacle, and it snaps in place. All right, I uh, told you, if I shake it, sorry about that, calm down. 
All right, let's go ahead and connect the CE19. Let's start with the eight pin for the 5105 side of things. So let's find our eight pin. Yep, that's eight. And, and the cable is symmetrical, meaning it, each end of this is eight, each end of that is six. And if you've used these cables before, you know that there are three indents around here and you line up to the indents that are on the receptacle and it snaps in rather easily. All right, you're going to take the other end of this cable and find the corresponding port on your radio and do the same thing, line up the three indents and insert it into place. All right, take the other cable this is the six pin connector. And we're going to plug it into the ACC port of the back of the XPA 125B. Again, you're lining up those three detents, bumps in that pin connector to XPA 125. It is connected. All right, now, antennas. Grab. This is my antenna. This is going out to a 73 foot sloping wire. It's about 20 feet off the ground. Uh, coming down to a chameleon antennas hybrid micro matching unit. All right. And this will be the patch cable that goes to the X5105. It's going on the transmit side. So the radio is transmitting, sending RF into the amplifier. BNC connector on the other end. And there, my friend, you are connected. All right, now let's do a switcheroo here. Let's spin this around. Uh, I'm just gonna leave it live. So you can see how easy it was for me to do these connections, not playing any games and you know reconnecting it offline and then powering it up. It's clumsy, I know. But let's show real life. How about we get a microphone? All right, that was pretty simple. You know, a couple of minutes and uh, the cables are all connected. Let's power up. Alright, I don't have power coming into my X5105, so let's run off a battery. Let's turn on the XPA125B. Ah, I have to turn on my power supply. Let me flip my antenna switch, because right now I'm on another antenna and a rig. There we go. All right, it's pretty late in the evening here. Uh, 20 meters will probably have no activity on it. Let's quickly go over the information that you're going to see on your screen on the XPA125B. I can't assume that you've watched my prior videos on this and that you all know what the information is, but some of you have, so I'm going to keep it in summary. If you need more detail, go back and look at some of my previous videos on the XPA125B, specifically what the information is on the screen. Top left, top right, SWR. So top left, SWR that your radio is seeing, SWR on the right-hand side, uh, that's at your antenna. So if you've used your automatic antenna tuner or you've tuned up manually, these two should be reading very close to the same thing, pretty much a one-to-one -one match. Bottom left, power coming out of your transceiver at five watts. In this case, 
bottom right power going out to your antenna, which because we're going to be operating single sideband in the QSOs that I will give us a demonstration, will fluctuate. You will see it go up to over 100, just slightly over 100, and it will bounce everywhere else in between 20 to 100 constantly as the modulation changes with voice inflection, and that is normal. Right now we're in auto mode, meaning because these two were built to communicate with each other, when you switch bands on the X5105, the tuner and the amplifier recognize that and they automatically change bands with you. Okay, so right now everything is in automatic, which is exactly what you would expect between these two units. Let's show you how to go through a tuning cycle. Now here is a finding for me. I have been using this pairing for a couple of weeks now and I can no longer force it into a automatic antenna tune mode. What, here's what I mean by that. Um, it doesn't advertise as though it has memories, but it seems to have memories. I, I'm not guaranteeing that, I'm not stating that, but I've gone to some bands on which my antennas are not resonant and my SWR reads good. So I'm wondering if this thing has some features that just haven't been communicated to us. I, I don't know that. That's a mystery to me at the moment. So I'm not going to be able to actually force it into doing an automatic antenna tune. I will show you what that process is. And then I will also show you how to do a manual antenna tune. Let's see what we can do on 80 meters towards the lower end of my privileges. people out there, we're not going to step on people. All right, let's go into CW. Let's take it in auto and let's see. That's at 2.0 to 1. It is designed to kick in uh, at 3.0 to 1, so let's go into a manual tune. There was a manual tune. Let's do one more attempt at an auto tune. I don't spend much time on um, 6 meters uh, just because. I haven't been able to pick anybody up on six meters, so let's take a trip. Switch over to CW. We are on auto. Let's see if the SWR is greater than three to one. It's not, it's 2.1 to one. Let's force it into a manual tune. down at 1.4 to 1 now. KD4 BFG testing, no response required. We're going to jump over to uh, several QSOs that I recorded over a two-day period of time when propagation wasn't that hot. Um, but I want you to see what's happening on the screen of the XPA 125B. These are not back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back QSOs as it will seem. I just crunched them all together on the screen and uh, cut out all the dead space. So they did happen from morning to evening over a two-day period of time. At the end, you'll see my QSO map so you can see how far I contacted people using this pairing. You'll also hear the quality of the sound. Now, of course, it's coming out of this small speaker on the X5105, but you can hear the signal reports I'm getting and you can hear the voice quality coming back to me again on two days where propagation was pretty rough. There are about a dozen QSOs. Some of you will watch them end to end because you really want to see the feedback that's happening on that screen that corresponds to my voice as I'm talking, how the modulation impacts the wattage out. Uh, others of you will bore quickly and you understand what's happening and you just want to rush straight to the end. Uh, have at it, not a problem.
Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf, you are 5-5 from Kilo Kilo Delta 5-5, you are 5-5 in Tampa, Florida. Seven three, have fun. Kilo Delta Four Bravo Mike Golf. You are five seven fifty seven into Tampa, Florida. QSL. Kilo Delta Four Bravo Mike Golf. Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. Uh, hello, Giannis. 5 7. Happy day holidays to you, friend. 5 7. 57. 5 7. Thanks for the call and day. 7 3. 7 3, friend. Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. Copy the 5-5. Five five. You are 5656 into Tampa, Florida. QSL? 565656. Seventy-three. Happy holidays, friend. All right, A ninety-one. Sure working for you. Got plenty of audio. Thank you. It's seventy-three. Yours is Kilo Delta Four Bravo Mike Golf. Kilo what Baker? Kilo Mike Golf. Kilo Delta Four Bravo Mike Golf. Kilo Delta for Bravo, Mexico, Germany. Bravo, Mexico, Germany. You are five nine, Texas. Copy the five nine. You're five seven, Tampa, Florida. We copy the five seven. Yes, when it's tuning up the radio here, so it sounds like they're going to make a call here pretty soon. But we copy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. Kilo Bravo 4. I'm uh, sorry. Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. I hope I got that right. This is WA2CXA. Uh, thanks for calling. Coming back to my CQ. I'll uh, see you in the next quarter. Handle here is Bill. Bravo is here, Lima Lima. And the Yeah, Bill, you got the call sign right. The name here is Bob Bravo, Oscar Bravo, and the QTH is in Tampa Bay, Florida. Tampa Bay, Florida. I was just scrolling through the bands, testing out some new equipment, and I thought I would come back to you. You're coming into Tampa at about a 5757. QSL? Yeah, Roger that, Roger that. Yeah, I have a, a a lot of noise coming in right now, I think, uh, by some of the CCT on frequencies real near to us. So I'm not going to hold you and uh, cause you any difficulty in picking me up. I'm going to let you go on to uh, perhaps some people with uh, better propagation than me right now. Over. Roger, Roger, you got it right, friend. Okay, very good. Uh, thanks for the short one. 73 and uh, Merry Christmas. 
Stay safe, friend, and happy holidays and Merry Christmas to you as well. 73. Kilo Delta for Bravo Mike Golf. Kilo Delta for Bravo Mike Golf. Hello, Bob. How is everything in Fine Harbor? You are 58 today, over. Copy the 58, Laro, and uh, you are 5'9 into uh, Tampa Bay, Florida. Everything is fantastic here. Friend, I hope you are well and safe and you have a wonderful Christmas holiday. Hey, you too, man. The best for you and your family. And uh, we don't talk before. Uh, Merry Christmas and uh, Happy New Year, brother. Uh, Kilo Delta 4, Bravo, my girl. Papa, solo to Yankee Tango. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, 73, friend. Kilo Delta 4, Bravo, Mike Golf. You are five four five four over. Uh, can you come back with my signal report? I'm sorry, I've lost you in the noise. I can't hear you anymore. Copy that five seven five seven. You are five four five four in Tampa, Florida. QSL. 73, have fun. Hello, Delta 4, Bravo, Mike Golf. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, good morning. The name uh, is Bob here in Tampa, Florida, Kilo Delta 4, Bravo, Mike Golf Station. It just came back to me. Relay, you're coming in about 5 9, over. Okay, I missed your name. It was just a little bit of QRM when you gave me your name in Tampa. Uh, please, sir, go ahead. It is uh, Bra uh, Bravo, Oscar Bravo, Bob, Bob, over. Norway 6, Ocean Papa Radio, Kilo Delta 4, Bravo Mike Golf. Kilo uh, Delta 4, uh, Bravo Mike and Golf, thank you for using phonetic. My name is Bob, I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. Go ahead. QSL, my name also is Bob, and you are 5655. Coming into Tampa, Florida, just have a couple of minutes before I have to get back to work was scrolling through the bands and heard uh you have a net can you tell me what the net is about over roger that roger that long standing great to hear that you know from arizona to uh Florida, I'll take it on the lousy propagation I've had these last two days. I'll let you get back to other uh, QSOs and your net. I appreciate you coming back to me, friend. Hope you have a safe and happy Christmas holidays. Over. Okay, my friend. Thank you for stopping by and be safe. It's the show for you. Bye-bye. 73, friend. Whiskey 4, Brava Delta Hotel. Kilo Delta 4, Bravo Mike Golf. Roger that, roger that. I'm not that guy, but I love that uh, that suffix, brownie machine gun. I always remember that. I uh, hope I didn't break into the queue so it sounded like you ended. I was uh, just scrolling through 40, testing some new equipment, and uh, your signal's just booming into me here in Tampa, Florida. Over. Coming in good. 
Roger, Roger, no wonder uh, we're, we're, we're getting each other so well. I must have your call sign incorrect. I, I show you as Whiskey for Bravo Delta Hotel out of uh, Morton, Illinois. So I must have picked up your call incorrectly. I'm in Palm Harbor, Florida. Yeah, so we could almost throw a stone and hit each other. Over. Okay, Bill, I have you now. I have you now. I see you in QRZ in Tampa, Florida. That explains an awful lot here. Uh, again, the name here is Bob, and I'm in Palm Harbor. So, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Maybe as the crow flies, we're 20, 30 miles away, but I know exactly where you are, and and uh, it, it, it's good to pick you up. Again, I was just testing some new equipment. I'm on a QRP, a QRP rig going through an amplifier, and I'm just testing on different bands, and... Uh, I appreciate you coming back to me. Over. Okay, Bob. Real good. Real good. Uh, you call us. What is your call again? I messed it up. Over. Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. Okay, and we'll put that in my little book here. KD4 BMG. Okay, we got you, Robert. Take care and best 73, okay? 73, friends, stay safe. Merry Christmas. Talk to you soon. Bye. Kilo Delta 4, Bravo, Mike Golf. Kilo Delta 4, uh, Bravo, Mike Golf. I can't do it. Bravo, Mike Golf, Browning Machine Gun. Kilo Delta 4, Bravo, Mike Golf. You're 5 6 into Tampa, Florida. All right, Kilo Delta 4, Bravo, Mike Golf. You are 5 8 in North, North Carolina. Go ahead. Roger that. Thanks for the 5 8. Have fun. Thanks for the park. A few final thoughts on this pairing, or a mini review, so to speak. Is there anything that I don't like about the XPA125B working with the X5105? Well, I really don't care for the instructions, but any of us who own Jaigu equipment, you know, you just got to chuckle out of that when I said it because you know what I'm talking about it. We have some fairly sophisticated equipment here. It works well. It's a decent quality, but gosh, those instructions. Jaigu, if you ever watch one of my videos, please do something about your instruction manuals because you've given us some really nice equipment here. It would be nice to have better instructions, better written, more information. The only other thing that I believe, you know, is a, a little bit quirky is this cable situation. Why do I have a six pin and an eight pin? It would be a lot easier if I just had two cables that were pinned out the same way. Now, if somebody watching my video knows the legitimate reason why it is that way, could you post that in the comments because I'm interested in knowing and perhaps some of my viewers are as well. The only other thing related to this cable situation is, is right here. So if this were my permanent shack setup, this cable protruding out the side of the X5105 just takes up space. It would be nice if this were a right angle connector. Out doing POTA, SODA, doesn't matter, right? I'm in a temporary setup. I have already have things spread out, equipment and cables everywhere. But if this were my shack setup, I would really want this to be organized nice and I would want to find a right angle connector um, to pair up there with the X5105. I've seen them on Amazon. I haven't purchased one, so I don't know if it works or doesn't work. That's kind of getting nitpicky. What do I like about this pairing? Well, I like that I have the option to manually tune my antenna. You've seen that I can't get this thing to jump into an automatic tune because I've been using it for two weeks and I swear it has a memory. When I go to areas of bands that I know I'm not resonant, it won't tune up. I mean, that's not the correct thing to say. It seems to have a memory to know that it was there before and it automatically adjusts my SWR. It doesn't need to go into a tuning cycle. It's giving me good SWR like it has a memory. So I do like that I have the capability to do a manual tune here. The other thing I like about this pairing is it just works. When you have everybody in auto, it just pairs well together. So there's not a lot of fuss and muss about this thing. Get it set up correctly, 
put everything in auto. Put it in auto band select. Put it in automatic power. Put it in an automatic antenna tune situation. Turn off your antenna tuner in your rig. Um, make sure that you're at five watts and basically surf the bands and have fun. That's it. It's a wrap. I hope this was helpful to you, friend. I had fun putting this together for you. Keep your eye out. This is getting paired up with several more QRP rigs. I'll talk to you soon, friend. 73.